So here we are inside the uh, CV Johan and we've just got a representative display of the sort of stuff that we'd have on the map board. Um, the actual map that's on the background of this is an American map. So these are actually American objectives um, that, are, that are on there. So this is a, just, just for a bit of display. But if I can draw your attention to this map here, this map actually displays the whole of the Operation um, Desert Storm attack and shows you exactly who was doing what, where and where they were going. If I can draw your attention to this map, this map sort of shows it in a little bit more detail about what the Brits did. Now, we like to think that the Iraqis thought that wherever the Brits were, that was going to be where the main point of attack was going to come from. So initially, when we arrived in uh, Saudi Arabia, we offloaded, offloaded at the port of Jabail, and then we came under command of the uh, US Marine Corps. Right. Absolutely top blokes. They were at first rate, really professional soldiers, thoroughly enjoyed working with them. And so for the uh, sort of October through to uh, uh, December, we did a lot of exercises in the desert, in the sort of Al Jabail area. And then Christmas came, a few more British reinforcements, another British brigade came out and formed 7 Brigade and 4 Brigade and together formed the, the United Kingdom Division. And what it was then decided, if I can draw your attention to this little schematic here, so this is where we would have been down by Al Jabal, they thought, right, what we're going to do is we're going to put the Brits under command of the 7th US Corps. But that meant we had to track and transfer ourselves hundreds of miles to the west, down to the, what was called the Wadi Albertine. And then basically there was a big concentration area, the likes of which you've never seen before in your whole life. You can imagine all the Brits were lined up, all the Americans and all their divisions were lined up in this particular concentration area. And then basically we were having set ourselves up there. When the time came to move, we all moved north. And actually what we did is we all swung to, to, uh, to the east and came into a Q8 from that, that direction. That was the so-called left hook. So that was exactly right, Johan, that's the left hook. And as you can see on this map, the whole concept was a left hook. That's not to say that there weren't people down on the uh, uh, Q80 border that weren't going up, but the whole idea was the big left hook, and some of the American units really went very, very deep into Iraq on their left hook. But we sort of did a smaller left hook up and then straight into Q8 and there's some vehicles here um, our particular squadron were the uh, first elements other than the SAS we were the first elements from the uh, one United uh, Kingdom armored division into into Q8 and basically we had to go up a lot a big big sort of uh, 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 incline and then across what was an old Q80 um, firing range and then we were into, into Q8 uh, and then that basically is what we did and what we've got here is like I say all the different schematics of all the little battle plans uh, of, of how we uh, conducted the operation. Our main operation as we said is on an objective called lead which I just explained about our little uh, uh, <laughs> a little engagement with the T-59 tank and basically what we did is we had uh, forward air controllers with us we had the likes of uh, um, strikers providing uh, anti-tank guided weapons and we also had uh, ground to air communications to talk to the American A-10s uh, to guide them onto the targets and so basically we, were, we, we attacked objective lead and it was a bizarre situation. There's a little tiny picture here. The sky was completely black because, of course, what they'd done by that time is they'd started lighting all the oil fields. The weather was overcast. And although it was sort of 8, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning when the uh, uh, attack was going on, it was absolutely pitch black. It was like nothing I've ever experienced. And I suppose it was a, a real case of technology overcoming a basic military force. The poor Iraqis just didn't know what had hit them. Um, basically they were being hit by multi-launch rocket systems, the A-10s were coming in, the likes of Sean who you meet later was firing his uh, swing fire missiles and in the end 
they just gave up. And halfway through the attack, you started seeing white flags and all the Iraqis coming towards you, surrendering. Well, clearly, as recce forces, we couldn't take them prisoner. So what we did is we corralled them all, took all their weapons off them, chucked them a few boxes of MREs, the Americans' meals ready to eat, and a few bottles of water. And then, really, we had to then crack on and allow for the battle groups then to uh, process them as prisoners. All right. Now, could you tell us about some of the other equipment that you've got in here, uh, other than the maps? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, in terms of the communication, we haven't got all the communication systems in here, but basically we had a number of communication systems. VHF radio, right. which was basically the squadron net. So our squad, we, we controlled our, our uh, uh, troops on a VHF radio system, and at the time, we had just got a secure speech system in. Before we had secure speech, this is what's known as a BATCO wallet, so we had to encode everything that we were transmitting so that nobody, if we, they were being listened to, um, nobody could understand what we were saying. But actually at the time we had a secure speech system installed on the squadron net which made command and control so much quicker because people weren't having to sort of take down and decode messages and you could act on it straight away. You then had another proper secure VH, uh, 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 VHF secure system, which you talk back to the re uh, regimental controlling headquarters to tell them what you were doing and them telling you what to do. Um, in addition to that, you had a sort of, uh, it was an emergency backup high frequency system that was long range. So if VHF was jammed or anything like that, then basically you could revert to the high frequency uh, radio communication system to talk, talk back. And then you had one more radio system, which was a bit like a mobile telephone. It was called single channel radio access. And a bit like a mobile uh, telephone system, the Royal Signals would have nodes that were radiating out that you affiliated into to allow you to talk talk to each other and basically it was it was a mobile phone system you could dial up a number and ring them up and talk to whoever was on that particular fre frequency and that was a bit of a battle winning equipment as well but it was the first generation of its type and the amount of kit that went with it to support that particular infrastructure was unbelievable but i think the battle winning communication system for us was definitely having secure speech and being able to talk knowing that if they, even if anybody was listening in to us they couldn't understand what we were saying because all the, all the speech was being, being encrypted. Right. Um, I suppose the other kit, as I've, I've mentioned the machine gun, so at the top I had a GPMG machine gun which I used against the tank, not, not that it did much good but at least it sort of uh, showed them we, we, we were willing for a fight. We had our small arms and then we also had a, 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 another um, uh, anti-tank system called uh, um, Law, uh, uh, Law, which had again just been introduced. And the rather funny bit about, the uh, funny story about that was that when we got bumped by the tank, We'd only had about three training sessions on this particular bit of equipment and the bloke that jumped out with the law is racking his brains trying to remember what he had to do to open it, extend it, put the sights up and how to fire it. And by which time, sadly, the tank had disappeared over the horizon by the time he was ready. Yeah. But anyway, that, that's the sort of stuff that we had. 